head writer for Stephen A. Smith, he pisses people off. That that and he, isn't he the highest paid. Uh, He's not a comedian, though. He, he, yes, he is. He can, he can be funny. He, he can, can be, be funny, funny, but he's but, 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 but he has his own thing. Let's see if we can hear Michael. Uh, can you hear? Uh, you're coming in a little. I'm really sorry. Uh, we, we're going to have to get him back on. Yeah. But but, but anyway, T Tammy, was you offended by uh, Chris Rock talking about the uh, 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 much money he spent on sex? No, the only part that made me even slightly cringe was the part where he was talking about. Um, I'm sorry. Oh, Go ahead. Go ahead. You know what he was talking about. Um, opioids and drug use, and I was like, "Is he? Is this a joke?" I was a little saddened because you know that we don't hear that about him, and so I was, I was really, you know, combing my mental rolodex to think if, if he ever been associated with drug use, because that was kind of what I, the message I was yeah, getting. He I got. was associated with drug use. Didn't you see him in New Jack City? He was pooping. But I mean, he was acting. <laughs> I was acting. I'm talking about for real, for real. So that was the only part. But no, I was not offended. I mean, first, he wasn't talking about me, so I couldn't be offended. But I felt like that was what you get again. Like you you put your hands on him on national television and he used his platform to whoop your ass back. So he 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 that was you you threw a punch and he threw a couple of them back. So I don't know what to say again. That was it should have been expected, quite frankly. And oh, I yeah. personally I, I, knew I that at one point he was going to use his platform. He was going to, you know, gin up all of the anticipation. Wait, wait, wait. And I'm sure he made a boatload of money <laughs> off of that special. And I don't know if I can be. If I can. Oh, be right. right. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, no, we right. hear you. Um, thank you. Go ahead. Thank you, Thompson. I'm so glad to be among you all. Um, you know, I agree with what Tammy had to say. The fact of the matter is this. Um, you know, I don't think I, I heard anybody address um, what would have happened had, say, Will walked up on stage and slapped a white man. What if Will had slapped, say, Bradley Cooper? Mm -hmm. You know, what if Will had, what if Sarah Silverman had been on stage and said a joke like that about Jada? Would Will have, Will had, I don't know, 50 to 60 steps to decide not to do what he did. And he walked up on there and he slapped that man. Um, I don't know if you can do anything worse, you know, to a man publicly. If you've ever been slapped by a woman, which I have, um, try to walk away, <laughs> try to walk away. There is no way to walk away. You, you, you have to walk away, but there's no way to walk away with any kind of sense of dignity. Your legs are kind of jelly. Um, you don't know uh, how to react. You don't know how to act. Chris Rock took that. And I think a lot of the reason why people were so accepting of the fact that um, that that Chris Rock got slapped in is because it was black on black crime, mm -hmm. and they don't care. Bottom mm -hmm. line is, they don't care that they this care. black man slapped this other black man in front of. And again, as black people, three of us are, are, are on the show. Four of us on the show are black people. Um, There's just certain things you don't do in front of white people. You don't do that. Chris Rock was shocked. Um, uh, he was shocked to his core by Will Smith doing what Will Smith did. And it had nothing to do with Chris Rock whatsoever. What Chris Rock said during his, uh, his uh, uh, concert was absolutely accurate. It was selective outrage. But I'll say this, this is the only thing I can say positive about Will Smith. Will Smith has spent his entire career being, making himself socially acceptable to a white audience. That was probably as close to the real Will Smith as you ever saw. Him yeah, walking up there. I, I, I'll tell you, I, I will never want, I, I love Chris Rock. Him, Dave Chappelle, some other, some other comedians are, are some of the greatest social commentators and, and the strongest voices. John Stewart, really powerful voices in our society. And I will never watch a Will Smith. I, I, I used to watch, all, I saw most of his movies. I won't watch him again. It, well, let me it, I'm say just this. repulsed by what he did. I've never been a Will Smith fan, okay? Mm -hmm. um, and that, and quite frankly, I didn't think he was a good rapper. I didn't think he was uh, <laughs> uh, uh, funny at all, okay? 
And uh, the few movies that I saw, which was the uh, Bad Boys for Life, they were just okay for me, okay? But to Mike's point, the emasculation of another man on national television, it just was, it's, it's still offensive to my core. And this guy is huge. They made, Chris they, is they, a little guy. But then they you fight you. Freaking bully. Then when you they wanted bully. to, then when they wanted to fight you, uh -oh. they could get slapped and say, "Meet me at, at five o'clock in the morning," because I'm a, I'm a fuck you up because I'll <laughs> slap your ass. If you know what. But, but uh, to Chris Rock credit. Because if I had an Oscar in my hand and he slapped me, it would have broke on his head, you know. <laughs> but yeah, Will Smith knew who to hit and who not to hit. And, and, and to go back to uh, Michael uh, uh, Carson, no, he wouldn't have hit Bradley Cooper. He wouldn't have hit uh, he wouldn't have, he wouldn't have hit Shaq. He wouldn't have hit Dave Chappelle. There's a whole lot of people he would hit, but love, love, love Chris Rock. Yeah, he 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 hit him, and 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 he, he got away, get away with, with it. it. Yeah, he got, he got away with listen, it. After this, I understand this year Will Smith won an award for the movie Emancipation from the NAACP. And Did he? he gave this wonderful speech. I'm pissed at them. And why why, why you ain't pissed at them? They gave Chris Rock an award. Chris Rock. One of the biggest, hey, I mean, mean, oh, Kid Rock. Kid. Hey, one of the biggest, <laughs> biggest in, in America. They gave him an award. They gave his and, 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 and Reverend award. Randall Anthony told me why. He said, you know, he has a black kid. I said, all the slave masters had black kids, too. <laughs> you know, oh, he no, gave, gave him an award, you know, because he gave 10 grand. Yeah, kid, that, listen. So the NAACP has no credibility. Have no credibility no. for me. No. And plus, Will Smith playing that uh, ex-slave. You yeah. have seen the powerful picture. And man, I didn't see he's, it. And now Will Smith's trying to play the victim here now right. and say, "I'm offended. I'm hurt. I wish Chris would move on already. You know, this is hurtful and whatever." <laughs> it's like, sorry, you can't throw the first punch no. and then say. Oh my God! You hit me back. I mean, well, well, you bullshit. know what it's like. You go to a, 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 a titty bar, meet a dancer, and then you you like her. You start dating her. You, 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 you start you, you marry her. <laughs> then you mad that she's still uh, dancing at the at the bar. Oh. <laughs> you know what? That's what Will Smith. Oh. Yeah, Will Smith. Will Smith. They they, they business was out in the street. Everybody know about it, and all of a sudden, because he called a, a ball head or whatever the he called her. Listen, that joke that Chris at, at, uh, at the the what was that the office, the, G, the GI that Jane was, joke. Was funny. That was uh, to me. That was. But it wasn't. Funny I didn't. Joke. I didn't think that was offensive because she looks really nice with her haircut. I'm like, that I, I you agree. can make money yeah, off of it. Make money off of it. How many of us? How many of us knew that she had alopecia? Most of us didn't know she had alopecia. No. And you, I, I'm not sure your name um, in the white shirt here, but Vanessa, if you, Vanessa, 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 Vanessa never you don't see that name, sir. Vanessa will never be forgotten. <laughs> will never be forgotten. But you don't seem to watch a whole lot of movies. Had you I watched watch Will Smith had, movies? No, no. What I'm saying is, had you watched, had you watched GI Jane, you would have at least understood the joke. It was Demi oh. Moore with the ball head. That's yeah, what. It, that's I all the, it was. I understood the joke. I didn't think it was funny. I understood the joke, Mike. <laughs> well, well, it was funny. Well, Vanessa, if it was, if it wasn't funny, a damn sure wasn't worth getting you you slapped on national Hell TV. No, How about that? Worth, no, it wasn't. It wasn't worth uh, fighting. Let me ask you this, Michael. Uh, yeah. You you worked in Detroit, lived in Detroit. Uh, do we have a uh, Chris Rock in Detroit? I don't know what the comic scene is here. Uh, it used to be you. You can name some of the comedians that push some buttons and. Did uh, you say you went to a comic uh, yesterday at my, my brother's funeral? Oh, that but that's at everybody's <laughs> funeral. Uh, yeah, we got them in our family. You know, they hijacked the services. Right. But but anyway, is there any other but uh, up and coming uh, comedians besides Dave Chappelle or Chris Rock that's out there that? we need to be looking at 
In general. I Michael. don't. Um, in Detroit? Anywhere. Anywhere. Uh, um, wow. Um, you know, I really just, I really don't know. I mean, um, outside of the old heads, the standards, the Chris Rocks, the Dave Chappelle's, the John Stewart, all the, all the ones that I know are kind of aging out now. Um, you know who's a, you know who's a, who's a, a Netflix. Before, before you go, yeah, we're going to take another break. We're going to uh, quickly, and then we come back. All right. All right. Detroit in black and white. Raw. Yeah, it is wrong. I'm telling you, we're having a I'm County Treasurer Eric Sabri. There are payment plans available to help save your property. Visit our website at treasurer.waynecounty.com or email us at taxinfo at waynecounty.com for further information. We're here to help. You are to- Nearly 30,000 vacant lots all over the city of Detroit are for sale right now. That's right. Nearly 30,000 vacant lots are available now, starting at just $100. The lot next to your house or the lot down the street. Make it yours today in just a few simple clicks. Find out if it is available by visiting buildingdetroit.org. At the Detroit Land Bank Authority, side lots are just $100 and neighborhood lots sell for $250. You can apply and pay online today by visiting buildingdetroit.org. And if you don't see the lot you're looking for, call our offices. Our phone number is 313-974-6869. Again, that is 313-974-6869. We have already sold more than 21,000 vacant lots to Detroit homeowners. Make today your turn by visiting buildingdetroit.org. Okay, oh, okay. Uh, Michael, since we got you here, uh, moving mm-hmm. on from Kid Rock, uh, I, I understand Chris that Rock. you, Chris, Chris Rock, Rock, Kid Chris Rock, Rock. Okay. Kid Rock, Rock. Rock. Kid whatever Rock. Rock. Kid Rock is coming to Detroit. Okay, I'll or be Boston. out there burning <laughs> Confederate flags. Uh, yeah, I understand that uh, you working, you working on a book on uh, the, the. I thought he created techno music in, here May. in Detroit. And, uh, I want to know what's the real deal, Lonnie. Oh, he's trying to book about Derrick Yes. Oh. Yes. Um, the the real deal is that um, probably one of the most famous um, dance tracks of all time is called Strings of Life. It's written by Derek May and myself. Um, this is probably, this is 1986. Um, what happened is over time in the years uh, that have uh, passed by since I, I left Detroit and came to New York, um, I heard a lot about Derek's kind of shady business practices. I mean, he, he probably ripped me off to the tune of about $2 million over the years. I just kind of let it go um, because, you know, I live well. Uh, so I let it go. Um, but there were some guys in Detroit, other techno pioneers, about people by the name of like Blake Baxter, um, Thomas Barnett, these guys who also were there at the, at the infant stages of techno um, that Derek stole from. So I was working on a book about that and um, stumbled across a woman who used to work for Derek. And so once I got her contact information, called her up to um, thinking that maybe I would get some behind the scenes uh, uh, gossip about his, uh, his business practices. The woman told me that within an hour of meeting him, he had pushed her down and uh, on, the, on the ground and tried to get her to force her to give him uh, uh, oral sex. Um, I was shocked. I didn't believe it. Um, I kept doing more and more research and I kept running across even more and more and more people, more women with these kind of allegations. So um, what's happened, what happened in the interim after that was I just kind of went on a mission to stop this guy. Um, he has been a sexual predator for more than 30 years. And uh, nearly two dozen women have come out publicly around the world and told their stories oh. and published reports. But, but yet they won't write about it in Detroit. People know about it um, and they won't write about it. So it's kind of my, my responsibility as the brother of a woman who was raped when I was 17 years old. I couldn't do anything about it. I've kind of made it my mission 
to make sure that I do something about Derek May. And that's kind of what I'm doing with my time. So, my God, I'm glad that you're on the show. I didn't know you were the person because I've been keeping up with that story, believe it or not. I, I'm a ho- well, I'm a house head, old house head. Um, and I, I find the story very interesting because I've been, I've been reading about it. I can't tell you where I've read about it. It might have been online. But um, I find it very interesting that this guy was able to shut people down, shut it down, and just basically, you know, shrug it off. Um, the things that I've read have been very horrific. And I know it was on social media that I read it now that I, I, I'm thinking about it. Um, so this is very interesting. When, when and, my, and Michael, Michael, you had tell he he tried to sue you in uh, Wayne County Circuit Court. Yeah, right. um, he, he, he took me to Third Circuit Court. He cost me like $40,000. Um, his mission wow. was to file his, uh, his mission was to file a frivolous lawsuit against me in order to, he thought he could break me. Um, it's a tactic that a lot of guys who have power and influence use against the women that they assault. Because most of these women, the reason why they didn't come forward is they didn't have the financial resources to go up against them. So he went up against me. I had that was forty thousand dollars in five months, but I look at his forty thousand dollars well spent. I mean, I don't. I think he thought I was broke, um, <laughs> and he got it wrong. So what happened was, I I did what I did. If you read about it on social media, it came from me. Um, oh. I did it with one one man using his voice on Facebook, kind of galvanized people around the world. The fact of the matter is, people know what the truth sounds like, and that's because the truth it rings true to the ear. And I just kept repeating that message. And finally, it got out to enough people and people understood I was telling the truth. And then all these women came out. So if I, if I can go for just a second, it was my intention to get him. It was my intention to get him into court. I wanted him to sue me because there's so many jurisdictions around the world and statutes of limitations that had expired. I thought if I got him in the court and we can get to depositions, what would end up happening is I could get those women's Right. story. I could bring them in through depositions, even if they weren't actionable from a judicial standpoint. I could get their, their stories on record and maybe some prosecutors or maybe some police law enforcement around the world will go ch- check into this guy. But you know what? In the city of Detroit where I'm from and where I learned the journalist to trade at the Detroit News, nobody would write about that. That was news. If it's news when Bill Cosby and R. Kelly and, and, and Harvey Weinstein get accused of rape and sexual assault, it is news when one of your favorite sons and alleged founder of techno, um, uh, the same when that same thing that when he's you, accused. You said he didn't, find, he didn't found techno. He's not the guy that created the sound. He, no, you, what Derek is, Derek was the mouthpiece. What a lot of people don't understand is techno was a word that was in use in relationship to genres of music over in Europe well before they ever heard of it, okay? It just was. What Detroit was doing was trying to copy their brothers in Chicago doing something called house. It was all called house. And what happened yeah. is what, what, what happened is when the guy from his name is Neil Rush and he's a UK promoter. When he came to Detroit, he wanted uh, he came for a song called Nude Photo, which was written by Thomas Barnett, stolen by Derek May. What he uh, what Neil tried to do is he wanted to find a way to differentiate what was happening in Detroit from what was going on in Chicago as a marketing ploy. So they came up with techno, but it was all the same music. If you go back and close your eyes and listen to what they were doing in Chicago and listen to what they were doing in Detroit, it was the same stuff. So what they ended up doing is they stole the use of a name, techno, that was already in use over in the UK. I'll put it yeah. to you this way. If I could, Why don't you hold tight way. for a minute? We're going we gonna to take oh. a phone call. We're working on this. Oh, Are you there, Carla? Yes. Yeah. Here. All right. Yeah. You have a speaker. You have a question. Hold on a second. Hold on. Turn it up. Put it on speaker. Turn it up. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Okay, go ahead. Yes, I'd like to congratulate y'all, uh, Deadline. I mean, uh, Adolf and the rest of your crew for having y'all on podcast. And I thought, first, I thought y'all got hijacked by that old station. That's we why we, that's why y'all we was did. having we all that. We did. <laughs> I 
<laughs> I, I thought y'all got hijacked because I thought they was hating on y'all and they found that I found out and they found out that y'all had y'all own podcast and they was trying to uh shut y'all down for hate I mean for for, for them for hating on y'all. But I like to con congratulate y'all and I will be listening. Okay, thank, thank you. And thank you very much. Uh when are your book? We're gonna uh wrap this up. Michael, when your book coming out? Um, I, I, I'm working on three books at, at the moment right now. I expect that you're going to see the first, the first one you will probably see will be in my hand probably as soon as the first week in April. Okay. Um, I will, I can always come back anytime and give you all the details. And, 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 we, and, and, and we want you to come back. Absolutely. Okay, you know what? I'm, I'm sorry about, uh, sure. we, 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 we going to be polished and I know all you haters out there. Yeah, it was it was a clusterfuck, but here we are. We go, we ain't going nowhere. We'll be back every week, and we gonna we gonna get better and better. And, uh, and Michael James, and by the way, uh, can't wait for the book, and we want you to come we back. Can't wait for you to come back, Mr. And, James. and give us the four one one. I won't forget you for sure, Vanessa. Mm -hmm. Um, no, it's my absolutely my pleasure anytime, guys. Anytime, okay. Thanks, right. thanks, thanks, Michael. Thanks, Michael. And uh, uh, right. the uh, final thought, um, uh, Tammy. Oh, wow, why are you yeah. putting it on me, Adolf? I don't have no I'm final put it thoughts. On you. <laughs> uh, you know, you know I just yeah, sell that house, sell I, those houses. What are you talking about? I'm just <laughs> excited, I'm, ex I, I'm excited for you. I'm excited for you and the team and your new platform, and I'm I'm sure it's gonna get it's so much traffic and people. I see all the comments scrolling in the screen right now. I'm sure it's just gonna be even bigger and better than it already was. So I'm super excited. Well, to and we're gonna have, we're gonna have to have to have you on. Thanks, and, and and thanks for your support. Uh, and and the Detroit Land Bank, you've been doing your thing. Uh, uh, actually, let's salute. It's Women, Women's History Month. We had International Women's Day. This is a sister that's running the Detroit Land Bank. Thank Kudos. Thank Kudos. Uh, all right. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Final thoughts? <laughs> final thoughts. Uh, I just pay attention to uh, the elections and, uh, you know, pay attention to what uh, the state legislator is doing. I mean, we have a Democratic-controlled state legislator. We're hoping for some gun legislation for some voting rights uh, legislation here in the state of Michigan, and I hope that it becomes contagious. I hope the legislature here in Lansing can be a template for other states to adopt, particularly in gun, on, on gun issues, which is long, long overdue. Go ahead. Uh, my final thoughts is I, I want to thank everyone for being so supportive of me. Um, if people have been paying attention the last couple of weeks, uh, my brother uh, made his transition. Uh, we had a celebration of life yesterday, and it was truly a, a celebration uh, of his life. So I'd like to thank everybody for being supportive, and I want to encourage everybody to, to continue to be supportive of us in, for, in Detroit, a Black and White, our podcast. We move from sitting at our homes to an actual studio. This is our first time in the studio, and as we're at Apex Studio in Ferndale, Michigan, and we will be better and better and better. And I want to say, I, I had an outrage before, you know, the uh, sound uh, smacked me in the face. But anyway, uh, the the four young people that got uh, shot, two died in Mexico, oh, yeah. and they get an apology uh, from the drug from cartel. The cartel right. Now that is an outrage. Well, and you, you know, know what? That that is an outrage. Yeah. I, I, they kill these folks, say they was Haitians. But you know what? Listen, I, I'm not surprised because there's a uh, uh, the U.S. The, uh, State Department alert for African Americans going to the Dominican Republic. They're getting picked up by Dominican uh, officials to be sent back to Haiti. So they don't know the difference, and yet they come over here and want to... Uh, Whatever, but that that was my yeah, outrage. That's an outrage. But anyway, well, the we, cartel, the cartels don't want the heat. You know, when you kill Americans on foreign soil, you're going to have the FBI right. and, and every everybody else, and, and possible, you know, working the state department. What are they going to send? Some flowers like uh, right. uh, 
Al Capone used to right. do after he shot somebody. Right. But anyway, thank you, thank you, Michael James, thank you, Tammy, uh, Daniel, thank to all the uh, folks out there that's uh, tuning in, and we're going to get better and better. We'll have a number you can call in yeah, uh, next we'll week, and, and we'll see where this goes. But you know what? I like it. I do, too. So I like it. I Be like back. It. All right. Detroit yeah. in black okay. and white. Thank all you. right, everybody. Thanks so much, uh, Take Joe. Bye. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye-bye. Thanks. Thanks, everybody. Take care. Yeah.